Okay, love you. I'll be back in an hour. Take your time. Together, Spencer and his dad watched her pedal away. Spencer, do you know why bikes can't stand up on their own? Because they're too tired. I already know that one, do you? I know all your dad jokes. Impossible. Back in the living room, his dad plopped on the old familiar couch and grabbed a bowl of mixed nuts. Shell's still on. We're not supposed to eat those. Then why are they out here? They're for Mom's poker night. Well, I bet she won't even notice. Spencer gave a half-hearted smirk. Puns don't count. Spencer tilted his head in the mirror above the fireplace. Are reflections in the southern hemisphere upside down? Of course. But everything is, so it seems normal. His dad thumped the couch, inviting Evie up with him. She hopped up and barked, following the nuts from the bowl to the nutcracker to his lips. Evie, you know you're not supposed to be up there. Evie ignored Spencer. His dad waved a finger in the air, protesting. Evie knows the rule. She's not to be on the couch. When your mom's home. That's not... Spencer stopped to wonder. It made sense, but didn't feel right. Evie smirked and went right back to begging. Check it out. His dad pulled a double CD from behind his back. Happy birthday. Whoa, awesome. It's a Pearl Jam bootleg. I don't have this one. It's for Maddie. She didn't have any wrapping paper. Did you hear me tell your mom that your sister quit gymnastics? Yeah. You still love swimming, right? You're amazing at it. A little marlin. I'm the wahoo. A who what? Marlins are the fastest fish in the sea. That's Clark Jones. I'm the fourth fastest on the team. That makes me the wahoo. A wahoo? I love it. His dad didn't notice that Spencer never answered the question. Actually, Spencer wasn't even sure he liked swimming. It was just something he was good at. His dad put his feet up on the coffee table. Spencer and Evie knew, and his dad knew too, no feet on the table was a full-time rule. I know you know your directions better than most kids. Heck, better than most adults. The compliment was directed at himself, as much as Spencer. But here's another puzzle for you. Why do you suppose it is that if you walk north far enough, you'll reach the North Pole? And if you keep walking, you start back south again. But if you walk west forever, you just keep going west. Spencer stared out the window, pondering directions, mirrors, and polarity. A sharp wind carried the neighbor's grass clippings down the street along with a curtain of dust. Somewhere, a hidden passageway within his mind broke open. He was suddenly carrying the handheld mirror from his mom's bathroom, walking north for a hundred feet, then a hundred miles. As always, Evie was by his side. Where are we headed? To the North Pole. To see Santa? Don't be silly. Together, they walked another thousand miles under the icy, silver skies of the Arctic. He reached his destination, the exact spot where all the world's meridians intersect. It was marked by a 20-foot bronze compass rising above the snowy crest like a pitcher's mound. The compass pointed south in all directions, Spencer held his foot above the absolute center of the compass and concentrated on the mirror. Evie danced to keep her feet off the ice. What's it look like? What do you see? Ah, I'm freezing. His reflection split like an orange with 36 sections, wanting to peel apart and reassemble itself upside down into its vertical reverse. But it couldn't. Spencer's reflection was suspended in polar space. Spencer? Spencer was yanked back from his mental adventure. Did I lose you there? Outside, all was still again. There was no wind, no icy silver path leading north, no bronze compass. You can't walk to the North Pole. It was a fact so obvious it didn't need stating. But Dr. Barnes had told him it might help if he said these things out loud, in the moment, just to himself. 